Hey guys, welcome back into the channel. We're here for Mount Rushmore episode number, I'm going to go six of my Mount Rushmore series. Uh, we are talking today with Host. the co <laughs> Bad call. Keep going. The co-founder of Fat Kid Certified, uh, as well as myself and the other guy who's not here because he's in Chicago because he's a bum. Another vacation I came down to Florida for and Jay Gro's not here. Yeah, great job, bud. Uh, so I am joined by New York Yankee enthusiast, Seattle Seahawk enthusiast, uh, the godfather of my son, Craig Horton. Thank you. Thank you, Mike. It's a pleasure to be here. Absolutely. Uh, first time doing this. A little nervous, but... A little nervous. <laughs> yeah, but I think we'll be fine. Mm -hmm. Got some topics we can uh, Got some fun easily stuff handle. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, for those of you who have seen my shows before, I had Craig's brother, Billy, on for a couple episodes early in the... Uh, incarnation of uh, Fat Kid Certified Sports Entertainment. So we're back here today to talk about Mount Rushmore's. As I told you, he's a Yankee enthusiast, and I'm wearing a t-shirt that has Mr. Met on it, so you'd have to live under a rock to know that we're not talking about the New York Yankees and the New York Metropolitans. <laughs> so, let's just start there. Um, because Yankees are a big part of your life, I guess we'll start with the New York Yankees. Uh, I, have not, I have not done the Red Sox yet, so eventually you'll get me ooing and aahing. So when he does this, don't worry, it's probably going to be that way. Um, <laughs> so let's start first off with the honorable mentions. Um, I'll let you go first and then we'll talk about them. My honorable mentions, uh, first off, is Derek Jeter, captain. El Capitan. 20 years, meant so much to the team, to the city. Uh, just so clutch, so many so many spots he came up big. Um, the Oakland A's. Pitch throw that was Oakland A's, why are you standing 10 feet from home plate when you're the shortstop? No reason. Uh, <laughs> well, you guys in there. Hey, you know, let me go dive six rows in just to catch a foul ball against the Red Sox. Broken face. Which was also an awesome game that went way into like 13, 14 innings, yeah, I believe. Was, that was great, game, yeah. great game. Great uh, game. Lou Gehrig as well. Uh, the Iron Horse uh, career shortened by uh, Lou, Gehrig's Lou Gehrig's disease. Um, but also had a great career, part of Murderer's Row back in the 20s. Um, Yogi Berra as well. Yogi uh, won 10 rings. Um, one of the greatest catchers ever, you know, along with guys like Johnny Bench. Um, honorable mentions, though, to those guys. So many other guys. The Yankees team has just been in existence for 100 years. The history, the tradition, it's, it's just, there's so many, and it's it's really hard when you want to knock it down to four people. So, so this is this this is where we make all the money, because we had to knock it down to four somehow. Mm -hmm. uh, my so. honorable mentions, El Capitan, Derek Jeter, the greatest closer in baseball history, Marion Rivera. Uh, I left Rivera off my list. Really hard decision. He's probably the guy that I left off the most that pains me. Um, if you watch the Potters episode, I talked about how great Trevor Hoffman was. Um... Great credit to Mariano. He was a great pitcher. Not only not only just a closer, but he came out in situations, got wins, holds, stuff like that. Whatever the team needed, he was a guy that was a very big piece for them. And I think a lot of people don't credit his ability of coming back from the torn ACL in Kansas City mm -hmm. um, those last three years and pitched really well after the surgery. You, I don't also, become, you don't become the GOAT for nothing. No. I also left Yogi Berra off. Uh, Willie Randolph got some honorable mention for me. And a guy who... Left and came back that I don't think a lot of people actually give a ton of credit to first time in New York is Andy Pettit. I left Pettit off my list. I have him as an honorable so mention. So clutch. So clutch in the postseason. Oh, he was great in the postseason. Um, so we'll start our Mount Rushmore's. We'll, we'll alternate um, and we'll go from there. Uh, so we'll each list the guy and then we'll at the end we'll run back through it. So the first person on my New York Yankees Mount Rushmore, I added the Iron Horse. I put Lou Gehrig on there. Garrett played 2,164 games in 17 seasons as a member of the Yankees. He had 2,721 hits, so he was averaging, what, almost two and a half hits a game? Something like that. That's pretty fucking impressive. <laughs> 534 doubles for the Iron Horse, 163 triples, 493 career home runs. He had 1,995 career RBIs, had 1,888 runs scored, 340 batting average, and a 447 on base. He is a two-time MVP, finished six top five finishes and was a seven-time All-Star in 17 seasons as a member of the Yankees. I don't know what else you can say here about Gary that, that is the most impressive part of his stat line. Uh, 2,700 hits, uh, almost 1,900 runs scored, almost 2,000 RBIs, but the thing that stands out to me is the fact that he hit 340 and had a 447 on base percentage. He almost got on base 50% of the time that he was up. That's fucking impressive. <laughs> teams, the teams back then that they had their murder throw was sick. It was sick. That's why you listed your first guy, and it's like you just start thinking of everybody that played just back then. 
Yeah. Not only who played in the 70s and the teams in the 90s mm -hmm. and, you know, what they have now for the future. It's just, it's insane. That's why it's so hard to knock it down to four people. Oh, it's, it, this, this, there are teams where this is really easy. Marlins, Rays, Padres. And then there's teams like the A's, the Phillies, you guys. I know the Red, the Red Sox, Sox are going to be hard. History. Braves. Yeah. Like, there's just so much talent on those mm -hmm. five or six teams where it's like, I could do like two Mount Rushmores. Mm -hmm. I could put eight guys on this thing and make it work. So I'll give you the floor now for your first member of the Yankees. Right. Uh, my first is, like I said two minutes ago, he's the GOAT, Mariano Rivera. Uh, he played 19 seasons with the Yankees. Um, he started his career as a starter. Wasn't so great. They sent him down. He came back and they told him they wanted him in the bullpen. 96, he was the setup man to John Wetland. And from 97 on, he just he was it. He was the man. He had a 2-2-1 ERA. He pitched in 1,115 games. He leads all of Major League Baseball with 652 saves and 1,173 strikeouts. And he has a one whip. One. No one point something. One. A one whip. Um, it was lights out. I understand, man. He came in. Game over. I mean, he had a couple of slip-ups here and there. Cost a couple of championships. You know, it happens. The one against Arizona is probably the one that stands out the most. That the, hurt. The game seven loss. That hurt. That one. That one probably sticks out the most for yeah. Moe's yeah. trepidations. Yep. I mean, still, he still ended up with five World Series rings. He was a 1998 uh, World Series MVP against the, the San Diego Padres. Swept them in four. I, I mean, it was that was just a joke of a series. That series was over <laughs> that before, was it before it started. started. Um, so for me to. To start off my Mount Rushmore, it's, no, it's a no-brainer. Mariano Rivera, one of the greatest pitchers I know I've ever seen pitch. And I got to see him pitch a lot in person. And see, that's the thing, too, is is when you take into consideration that, like, there are guys that we're going to list on, and like he just said, we only seen them on video and on TV. Yeah. Like, just to be able to, like, I've been in Yankee Stadium, and I've watched this guy pitch in the World Series. Mm -hmm. it, it's, it's unreal. I mean, I, I saw a living legend, and... Mm -hmm. A lot of sports fans out there don't get to see these type of players on their own teams. And yeah, I was it's, fortunate it's, growing up in it's Virginia. It's so appreciated. Get, I got Ripken, you know, because I grew up in Virginia, so Maryland was a hour drive. So I got however many games of Kyle Ripken's career that I got to go see live. It's awesome. just it's something that you don't get to experience a lot. Mm -hmm. um, Mo was a 13-time All Star. He holds the major league record for most games finished with 952. He has 652 saves, like Craig noted. Uh, the 13-time All-Star, he was the World Series MVP, he was an All-Star Game MVP, uh, and has five rings, and has been enshrined in Cooperstown. Unanimous. First ever unanimous. Correct. And Jeter will be that way next year. I would agree with that. Unless there's that schmuck that just doesn't do it. But now that they've actually done it, I mean, I don't know if they, it's something that they'll never do again. Mm -hmm. um, so the second person on my New York Yankees Hall of Fame list is Joe DiMaggio. DiMaggio played 13 seasons, and about three seasons into his career, he lost three years of, of playing time due to military service. So DiMaggio, in his 13 seasons as a member of the New York Yankees, played in 1,736 games, had 2,214 hits, 389 career doubles, 131 career triples, 361 long balls, had 1,537 RBIs, 1,390 runs scored, a 325 batting average, an on-base percentage of 398. He's a three-time MVP. He finished in the top five three other times and is a 13-time All-Star. That's right. He made the All-Stars every season that he was a member of a major league roster. Again, one of those things that when you start seeing the stat lines that you look at, that's impressive. Hitting 325, being a 13-time All-Star, winning three MVPs. It's thing that a lot of these guys would hope that they could do. And yes, back in the 20s when you had this murderer's row, you, it was, which one of them is going to win it this year, guys? Who knows? So uh, I think DiMaggio was a – I mean, when you look at the Yankees as a, as a franchise, like him, a guy we haven't gotten to that's on both of our lists, um, actually probably both the other two guys that are both on our list, um, they're like the, the first names that you think of whenever you think of the New York Yankees. Mm -hmm. It's the three of them, Garrett, Jeter, Rivera, are like the first like seven names that pop into – most sporting fans' mm -hmm. heads. So, I mean, it's just... Yeah, but then there's also guys back in the day, Whitey Ford. Ooh, Whitey. Uh, I mean, these, these, these was a phenomenal left-handed pitcher. Um, you had Garrick, you had DiMaggio, you had 
Mandel, you had Maris. It, it, there was just so many. It's it's like I said, it's it's just being a fan of this team and seeing your history. It's you you try not to take it for granted, but at times you do. You're like, oh yeah, we're the Yankees. But then when you really look at it and, and really think about the stats and the history, it's pretty amazing. Yeah. You know of how much one team could have met. Um, so you have DiMaggio. Yes, I I have DiMaggio as well on my uh, on my list. Um, I don't know if you mentioned uh, nine nine World Series rings in thirteen years. No, so you're an All Star thirteen years. You played for thirteen years, and you won nine World Series rings. That's a pretty pretty impressive. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's not there's not many more things that you could put on your list of impressive performances other than you know going thirteen for thirteen. Yeah. You know, if you go if you go Jordan, go six for six. <laughs> that's probably the only thing that's probably more impressive. Yeah. Um, the next guy, well, like I said, I have DiMaggio as well. Mm -hmm. So another guy I have on my list is Mickey Mantle. Um, Mickey Mantle, to some people, and it's what, what, what kind of made people f not in a way forget about Joe DiMaggio, but the way he played the game, the way he sacrificed his body all over the field, he hustled. He had he was one of the fastest guys of his time, with with, with a time from uh, home to first. Um, he played 18 years. Um, he had uh, 2,415 hits, 344 doubles, 536 home runs, over 1,500 RBIs. He hit just under 300, and he had an OPS of 977 throughout his career. He also won seven World Series rings. Um, it was just a phenomenal, phenomenal uh, center fielder for the Yankees. Injuries screwed him up. Uh, he had a tripped and fell over a sprinkler. That was in center field. Um, tore his knee up. You know, you're talking back in the 50s. That was the start of the decline. They didn't repair, you know, athletes back then the way they do now. And his career just, you know, went on a downslope after that. But he's always remembered as, as one of the greatest center fielders to ever play in Yankee Stadium. Mm -hmm. Mantle was a three-time MVP, had six top five finishes, and was a 16-time All-Star. Um, he hit the Triple Crown. Um, the same year he hit the triple run. Yeah, that's right. He also won a gold glove and the batting title. The batting title was what year was that? Right there, three. Right there, three fifty-three. Mm -hmm. So fifty-six was probably the year that he did. Yeah, fifty-two home runs, one hundred and thirty RBIs. Going back to back yep. MVPs. Yep. Yeah, this slugging percentage I hear was seven oh five. Mike's got more of the inside information than I do. Dude, seven oh five was his was the slugging percentage. That's, that's crazy. absurd. That's crazy. <laughs> uh, yeah, I have Mantle on mine as well. It's very, it's fairly simple uh, to to put him on that list. And like Craig mentioned, if he doesn't tear his knee apart, I think there's more to this yeah, story. Way more. Um, he may be a guy that you legitimately have as probably maybe the best Yankee of all time if he doesn't lose mm -hmm. the downswing of his career after the knee injury. Um, but what can you say other than a great player, a great Hall of Famer? Um, very easy to put him on this list. Um, he was probably one of the only two that I thought was a absolute foregone conclusion lock. Um, him and then the guy we're going to talk about next, uh, George Herman, Babe Ruth. Um, Ruth in 15 seasons as a member of the Yankees after being acquired from the Boston Red Sox, played in 2,084 games, had 2,518 career hits, 424 of those going as doubles, 106 triples. Okay, I'm going to stop there. As big people, that's a lot we don't get triples. That's a lot of running. I've got triples in softball, and that's that's with open fields and no fence. I've but got, big people a, don't get triples. I've done a triple, I think, once in my life, and I think the right fielder. Have you ever there. seen George George Herman Ruth run the bases back in the day? He's pretty top heavy. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, there's a reason why they played in the parks with 430 feet in center field, so guys like him can get triples. I mean, if he hit the second base bag too fast, he'd just fall over. He'd be like Frank Flintstone. <laughs> <laughs> he had 659 career home runs, which stood as the record for a fairly long time. Fairly long time. Uh, 1978 career RBIs, 1959 runs scored, hit 349, had an on-base percentage of 484, won the MVP award once, and was a two-time All-Star. I think the problem, the stat, the stat lines, anyways, or the awards lines, is they didn't really give out a ton of awards. I think when 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 Ruth was really in the bulk of no, his career, we were, well, how many teams were in the league back then? Ten, nine. I don't know. I mean, he is a seven-time world champion, though. Yes, four of which were with the Yankees. 
Yeah, he, he played with some other team too. Yeah, some other team from Boston that he acquired. Yeah, that he got acquired. From. I wish I had a, a wife that needed to put on a Broadway play. Let me sell my best player. Uh, Thank you. How much? Hundred grand. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. May I have another? That was a swift kick right in the throat. Um, hey. No, I think I think Babe is probably the most synonymous member of the New York Yankees. Um, so. And all that for being a wimpy deer. <laughs> Damn it. Uh, so, the New York Wait, Yankees... Wait, you need to snap that guy? No, it's not that guy. Oh, I gotta get that ball back. Yep. Uh, so, the New York Yankee, Mount Rushmore, for myself, Babe Ruth, Mickey Mantle, Joe DiMaggio, and Lou Gehrig. For Craig? For me, it's Ma uh, Mantle, DiMaggio, Babe Ruth, and Mariano Rivera. So, you can see a Yankee enthusiast and a guy who's a fairly good sports enthusiast. We're kind of in the same ballpark when it comes to the New York Yankees, um, which is really weird because I was going to try to be as off from you as humanly possible when we said mine, but the exact same thing. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, it's greatness. You have to appreciate and respect it. So. Oh, no, absolutely. I, I, I said this whenever Mo blew his knee out in Kansas City, and I also said it when he retired. You, you come to respect someone that you see night in and night out do what they do and do it well. You know, yes, it sucked that I was on the receiving end of a lot of Mariano Rivera celebrations and stuff like that, and Jeter plays. But you respect those guys because... They played the game the right way, they played it hard, they, they gave everything. Absolutely. Um, and that's, an, I mean, you know, Jeter and Mariano, and you had guys like Posada with them, and Bernie Williams too, I mean, it's just, the, the list can go on and on for a team like this. It's I mean, and then even Bernie Williams. Bernie Williams, I didn't even mention. Mm -hmm. Bernie Williams, like I said earlier, how people... Mantle made people kind of forget about DiMaggio, you know, becoming the new center fielder, the new great center fielder. Mm -hmm. Bernie Williams. Like, the Yankees didn't have a great center fielder since Mantle when they got Bernie Williams. Mm -hmm. And you're talking almost 30-something years. Yeah. So you, 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 you admire these guys, and you can never say that, I would never ever say that Bernie was better than either one. I don't even think that I could say that Mantle was better than DiMaggio. But it's, it's what they were replaced with and how great their replacements were. And that, that fans like me got to see these guys play. Guys got to see DiMaggio 13 years, Mantle for 18. Bernie played 15, 16 years, I want to say, uh, give or take. Bernie played 16 seasons. 16 seasons, you know. Uh, he was a four-time Gold Glove Award winner. Yes, and as great as the Yankees are today, we don't have that kind of center fielder. No. You know, and the Yankees have one of the best teams in baseball right now. And another person we'd be remiss to, to not at least bring up in the discussion uh, if he did not, uh, unfortunately, get taken out was, was Thurman. Yeah, Thurman Munson was um, captain. He, he was the glue of that team. He, was, he wasn't the best player he's, he's, athletic wise. He's, he's Jorge Posada 10 or 15 years before Jorge Posada. Mm -hmm. Posada he was a phenomenal catcher. Yeah, Posada, Posada was a above average catcher. Yeah, his, his arm throw was probably one of the greatest, but I mean, the way he call a game, the way he worked with every member mm -hmm. of that pitching staff, including everybody in the bullpen, mm -hmm. Posada, Munson was kind of the same way. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, with his career being cut short with the untimely accident, um, he's someone that you, there's a lot left on the table. Another guy that, you know, we neither one of us mentioned the honor mentions, Robinson Cano. He had a pretty great yeah, Robbie had a good Yankee, career. Yankee career. Yankee career, yeah. Um, before he was traded or he left to be a free agency, mm -hmm. right? What yeah, he, the free agency. Free agency was. Yeah, he out. wanted a ten-year deal. I wonder how that's working out. Who's got him now? Oh, the team we're going to talk about next. Yep. So <laughs> we're going to transition now to the New York Metropolitans. So the New York Metropolitans. We'll start there with them. Um, they have been in existence what now? Probably like seven. Sixty-two. Sixty-two. Yep. Fifty-eight seasons. This is their fifty-eighth season. Um, theirs was a, a fairly easier, I guess I should say. Like, it was, like, the first, like, one or two were, like, absolute locks. But then, like, three and four, you could really interchange about, like, 17 pieces, it yeah. felt like. It really felt like we were trying to find the right pieces to the puzzle. It's like, ooh, is this a corner? No, 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 it's a middle piece. <laughs> Cross them off the list, then. This guy's dead. Cross them off the list, then. So, with that being said, we'll get right into the Mets Mount Rushmore. I will start this one off, and I will start with Dwight Good. Good in 11 seasons as a New York Met. Had a career record of 157 wins and 85 losses. Had a 3.10 ERA. Had 67 complete games. 23 of those being of the shutout variety. Threw 2,169 and two-thirds innings. 
had 1,875 career strikeouts as a member of the Mets and had a 1.175 whip. Rookie of the year, one Cy Young, four-time All-Star. I felt like he was a piece to this puzzle that fit very easily. Um, was not a piece that could be left out of this equation. Um, so good to me... When you think about the good Met teams of the 80s, he, he's like His name just the most, jumps integral, off the, page. the most integral piece of it. I mean, he was 18 years old with, what, a 97, 98 mile an hour fastball? Yeah, that, that wasn't seen that back nobody then. could touch. That wasn't seen back uh, It was insane. He came up, he was, a, he, was, he was a kid. He was 18 years old. He was a phenom. Mm -hmm. He was the talk back then. Back then in the early 80s, the Yankees were trash. They had terrible teams. And the Mets teams, they, they put a team together that was in the playoffs, what, six in the last few years of the 80s? Mm -hmm. Uh, anywhere from 85 to, to 1990. They were in playoffs almost every single year, led by Dwight Gooden. Um, 86, 87, 88, all were... Okay. Three, three, four years in a row? Yeah. Three years in a row. That's pretty good. Yeah, really good. Not bad. Uh, he did win a World Series. Yeah. 86 right? Mets. Yes, yeah. they did. Yep, yeah, he did. Uh, Cy Young, he had the pitching version of the Triple Crown. That was fun. Um, what year did you do that? Let's scroll through that. I think that was 85. Yeah, it was. 24 wins, a 1.53 ERA, 276 and two-thirds innings pitch, and struck out 268 hitters. <laughs> That's pretty good. <laughs> That's the year he won the Cy Young, of course, obviously. Uh, let's put a bow on that. So Wow. So I'm pretty sure uh, that that's yeah. a, that's a pretty easy one to put on. That both that, of that year alone might have solidified him to be one of the top four Mets of all time. Oh, you you had a 1.53 ERA and like 35 starts. Okay, you're on the list. Yeah, you just go ahead and walk right in, sir. Yep. Uh, so we're just gonna go ahead and take his ticket, and we'll move on to uh, the next member of the Mets. Yeah, I as well have Doc. Uh, another guy here played 12 years with the Mets. He played before my time, but I. When I was a kid growing up, I remember him pitching. I seen him on some other teams after he played with the Mets. It was Tom Seaver? Yeah. It was one one. He uh, was one ninety eight and one twenty four over his career. He had a two fifty seven ERA. He had one hundred and seventy one complete games. That's that. that that's that. So. Okay, we're talking nine innings. Nine I'm innings wondering. is a complete game. Sometimes I'm you know what people watch nowadays? My pitcher went five innings. Yay. This guy went nine innings, 171 times. For 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 record statement, we currently have the Chicago White Sox, or excuse me, Chicago Cubs, Milwaukee Brewer game on in the background. It's muted, so you guys don't hear that. Jose Quintana just went five and two thirds, and they're giving him a high five like he just threw a no hitter. Yeah. This guy, this guy just I don't know threw three and a third more, <laughs> 194 times. Uh, he also had 44 shutouts. That's pretty impressive. That's really impressive. He had over 2,500 strikeouts and a 1076 1 whip. Um, I believe he was a member of their World Series team back in 69. Tom Terrific. By the way, yeah, he was, Tom he Brady cannot copyright Tom Terrific because of Tom Seaver. He, uh, he, went, 25, he went 25 and 7 that year. That's it? Was he like an MVP or something Cy that year? He won oh, just a Cy Young? He won a okay. Cy Young that year. Yeah, Tom Seaver, really one of the greatest pitchers. Now, the Mets have some great pitching now. Let them play 10-plus years and keep doing what they're doing. Maybe in 10, 15, 20 years from now, you can put them in a discussion. Yeah. But right now, I, I can't think of two better pitchers that played their careers mm -hmm. with the Mets better than Dwight and Tom Seaver. Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't think there's anybody else that you could realistically put on the list. He was a three-time ERA champion. Um, he had, he threw, what was it, 3,000... 45 and two-thirds innings as a member of the Mets. There probably won't be a pitcher that's pitching right now in baseball that'll crack like 2,500. So uh, that's pretty impressive. So Tom Seaver is on my list as well. Uh, those two were the two puzzle pieces that I think we both thought uh, square peg, round hole. There was We were, we were going to find a way to break through uh, on the two of them um, no matter what. So my next member of the New York Metropolitans uh, Ring of Honor, Mount Rushmore, whatever you want to call it, is a guy who, when I talk about him, I get a warmth in my heart. Um, he was a guy who was their captain through the 2000s, a integral part of Team USA in the World Baseball Classic, a guy who unfortunately had his career cut short due to back, knees, ankle, wrist, 
concussion. Yeah. Uh, it is the, the the guy that a lot of USA baseball fans called Captain America. It is David Wright. Yeah. David Wright played 13 seasons, full full and or partial seasons. I will not count the two games that he played uh, at the end of last year as a season, like Baseball Reference did. I'm going to give him 13 full seasons and two games. Um, 1,585 career games as a member of the Mets. 1,777 career hits. He had 390 doubles, 26 triples, 242 home runs. Um, I know that number of home runs doesn't sound like a lot, but there were big situations where David Wright hit home runs for a member of the New York, as a member of the New York Mets. Um, so, I mean, the number itself may not be ooh, oh, ooh, that's so impressive, but there were big home runs for them in, yeah. in the years that, you know, he was there. Um, but also, he moved into a bigger park when they left yep. City Stadium. Yep, he so, went into So, City Field was a bigger park, you know. Well, ball didn't, the, ball didn't carry. Ball doesn't carry there very well. You know, I went opening weekend. They played Washington this year. That ball does not carry very well there. Um, there was like three home runs hit in the game, and I felt like they should have gone immensely further than they did. Like they barely got out. So um, that was really weird. 970 career RBIs for David Wright. 949 runs scored. He had a 296 batting average, a 376 on base percentage, and was a seven-time All Star. Um, he also played a position that. Not a lot of teams had locked down third basemen during this time. You guys had Brocious. Well, Brocious, and then inevitably at the tail end of Wright's career was, or the middle of Wright's career was A Rod. Yeah, I said A Rod. Um, you know, the Red Sox went through third basemen like it was water. Bill Miller, uh, Shea Hillenbrand. Mm -hmm. um, you know, there isn't the the lockdown of what you would see at third base now with Nolan and. Chris uh, Bryant, Devers, you guys. With, Josh Donaldson's playing a pretty good third yeah, base. You right guys, now. I mean, yeah, Miguel Andujar's been out for the year, but Urshela's played. I'll take Urshela over Andujar any day. Played really good. Um, so you have these. There, there isn't like these ton of lockdown third basemen. I mean, here there weren't. Now you have that. That's a position where it's like people are raising their kids to be third basemen. Anthony Rendon, another guy, really, really good third baseman. Um, you know, growing up it was center field shortstop is what you wanted your kid to be so that he could go play college somewhere. And then they move all the shortstops to different positions whenever they get to college or high school or whatever it is. You know, they're actually teaching kids how to play first and third base now because those are integral parts of, of teams. Flat um, Junior. His ass is a wagon. <laughs> Doesn't matter. Dude, his ass is a wagon. <laughs> he just strapped the cart to it. And he, that, that's a guy, uh, you guys can't see it, Javier Baez hustling out of the box for a double that like went which should have been a base hit. 180 feet. Because he just made it to second base. But still, I mean, the fact that he hustled out of the box, that, that's a banger play, dude. Run. Yeah. It's the easiest thing you can do in sports. Yeah, run. Run. And, and you got two fat guys telling you that. <laughs> okay? Run okay? Forward. Run. It's the easiest thing you could do. Mm -hmm. Your coaches will love it. Oh, yeah, he runs. He hustles. You'll make the team. Run out of the box. Unless you suck real yeah. bad. So David Wright is the third member of my Mets Mount Rushmore. I will pass to Craig for his third member of Team Mount Rushmore. Uh, my third member was, other than Ken Griffey Jr., this guy had one of the sweetest left-handed swings I'd ever seen. Uh, Daryl Strawberry. Ooh. Eight years with the Mets. He was a rookie of the year. won his rookie of the year. Uh, Seven-time All-Star. He, uh, he had a, a little over 1,000 hits, 1025 in hits. He had uh, 187 doubles, 252 home runs, 733 RBIs. He hit 263. He had an OPS of 878. Um, I just remember he had a cannon for an arm. He could jump. He was tall. Anything near the fence, he could le reach over the fence. And hit, 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 just watching him play right field was just, was just fun. I mean, anybody try to... You know, go home on a sack fly, you were done. But one of the greatest things I'd ever seen Daryl Strawberry do, he had a home run in Montreal one time. That ball was hit so far, so hard on the way up. When the cameraman was trying to find a ball in the upper deck, the ball was bouncing in right field. It was a missile. So I would just love to know what the exit velo was on that one and how far, how fast that one got out. The radar gun read, gone forever, Aaron Hernandez. Gone for, oh, gone forever, Aaron Hernandez. Yeah. I should have drafted him last night. That would have been a really good sleeper pick. Wow. Yeah. You know, because he's sleeping forever. <laughs> he gone. He gone, dude. He gone. Uh, I also had Daryl Strawberry on mine. I went back and forth between Strawberry and the guy that Craig's going to talk about next as the fourth member of his Mount Rushmore. I think the funniest thing is going through all the Mount Rushmores, 
Daryl Strawberry has the lowest batting average of anybody that I've put on a Mount Rushmore for a guy who's been an offensive piece. But like Craig said, he hit the ball hard. He hit the ball like really hard. Like today, nowadays. Like hard. piss missiles. If you're in baseball, you know what a piss missile is. That's how hard. He had a fucking seed. I think his next. Uh, Sorry, you who? You who? YouTube? YouTube? You who? You who? You who? <laughs> Sorry. Chocolate drink? Yeah, no. Nah. I think it's water and chocolate syrup. I think that's all that is. <laughs> I don't know. It says chocolate drink on the bottle. Again, fat people talking about food and drinks. Man. Yeah, well, you get well, confused. Get, you too, get, get uh, So, I had strawberry as well. Um, I went back and forth between him, the guy that Craig's going to talk about next, and then we'll get to the honorable mention, so I don't want to say who that was. So, I will let Craig get on with his final member of the Mets, Mount, Mount Westmere. My final member is uh, Mike Piazza. Pizza! Came over from the Dodgers. Mike um, Pizza. He was a phenomenal hitting catcher. Uh, Yo, we need a his, pizza. His great, uh, just uh, wow! I just drew a blank. I'm so sorry. Oh. It's a good thing we're not live. <laughs> Wait, we are. We're kind of live. We are. Hello, in TV Land. Yes. Uh, Mike Piazza, eight years with the Mets, uh, had 1,028 hits. He had 193 doubles, 220 home runs. Uh, he had 655 RBIs with a 296 average, with a 915 OPS. It really clutched too. Um, always came through in the clutch when the Mets needed a big the, hit. The home run on, on the, the, the first game, game after 9 11 against the Braves. The late. Uh, was it a game? It was the game winner, right? The uh, game tire? No, it gave them the lead. Gave, gave them the, the lead, lead late in the, in the game. In the bottom of the eighth. Um, he was also a big part of that team. Now, I emphasized hitting catcher. Defensively, me or Mike could have stolen base on him any day of the week. <laughs> okay? His good looks, his gorgeous hair, his hair and, his, really and his bat. Or what got him on this list? His hair is a million. He had phenomenal hair. Uh, you know, he did those head and shoulder commercials back in the day. Dude, I you know, don't hate the player. Hit but the uh, nah, never. Um, no, nah, just a really clutch guy. Um, I mean, defensively, like I said, he couldn't throw anybody out. But he 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 was he was a good. I, I guess I want to say pitchers catcher working with with the pitchers, if that makes any kind of sense. Which it probably doesn't. I, I, I think I just made something up. Um, his. No, we're getting stats. He might just the stat guy. over, over. Okay, now this is putting in his entire career. This isn't just his Mets career. His caught stealing percentage was twenty three percent for his career. Wow! In two thousand five, in two in two thousand five, as a member of the New York Mets, he threw out fourteen percent of the people that tried to steal on him. He let eighty two people steal bases and only threw out thirteen of them. <laughs> like I said, me and Mike were definitely stealing second base on Mike Piazza. <laughs> His, let's see, where, where's this one? There's one that was really bad. Oh, this one. 2002, as a member of the Mets, he let 125 stolen bases go by and threw out 27 for a whopping total of 18% of stolen bases. And yet you're still in the... You're still on Mount Rushmore. Mount Rushmore. Okay. It's his hair. It's the <laughs> hair. Luxurious. It's the hair. He's luxurious. Uh, so the New York Metropolitans, Mount Rushmore, I have Seaver, Gooden, Strawberry, Captain America, David Wright, Craig has Daryl, Doc, Seaver, and Piazza. My honorable mentions for the Mets were Piazza, uh, as well as Met folklore, Keith Hernandez. Uh, Edgardo Alfonso, a guy who doesn't get a ton of credit yeah. for his time in New York, but he was a big piece for them. Another another really good third baseman um, in, in that time. Uh, Mookie Wilson, a guy who probably flew out of the box. Oh, Gone. Flew out of the box. Second fastest guy I think I've seen. Yeah. Run. Ricky, Ricky's probably the only one that has a better first step and is probably mm -hmm. faster. Um, a guy who I don't think a lot of baseball fans will give him credit for what he did as a member of the Mets. Jose Reyes. I have Reyes as mm -hmm. one of my honorable mentions. And a guy who has the ability to get there based off of what me and Craig were talking about earlier, and that's Jacob DeGrom. Um, I, think the, I think DeGrom has a shot if he stays in New York to be a guy that could take the place of a strawberry or mm -hmm. one of the other pitchers or possibly even David Wright because, you know, Maybe Wright's Piazza. probably yeah. Wright and Piazza are probably our two that were not were like the fourth members if you had to rank them one through four. I think me and you probably both Piazza Wright were probably our fours. So um, with that being said, the New York Metropolitans are now complete. So now I will tell you what's next. Uh, I filmed the White Sox and the Cubs, so we have that one queued up. That's just myself. Uh, the next one I'm going to do. We're going to go cross split country here. Um, as I, I try to keep this regional, but I couldn't with this one due to some other implications. We're going to talk about the Philadelphia Phillies. And we're going to talk about the San Diego Padres. Ooh, I already talked about the Padres. 
Who the hell is Oh, and the Phillies with the Pirates. We're going to stay on the East Coast. We're going to go to Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. I'm fat. What do you want from me? I'm not geographically located, all right? There's a hurricane coming. What do you want from me? Why don't you go stand on the beach tomorrow? Playing football for West Canaan may have been the opportunity of your lifetime, but I don't want your life. Your life. So, we're talking about Phillies and Pirates next on the Mount Rushmore. Craig will not be here for that one. But look out for the next... I've been trying to go home and avoid a hurricane. Yeah. But look out for the next video that Craig's going to be on with me. We're going to talk about some fantasy football stuff as football season is getting right around the corner. It kicks off on Thursday night. So, we'll have a video with Craig about football. My next Mount Rushmore will be Phillies and Pirates. So, for one Craig third... Horn. One third member of Fat Kid Certified Craig Horn. I am another third member of Fat Kid Certified, Mike Rudeer. This has been Fat Kid Certified Sports Entertainment. Follow me on YouTube right here. Hit the like, subscribe, thumbs up. Tell us what we did right. Tell us what we did wrong. Tell us if you agree with our Mount Rushmore's. Also, you can follow me on Instagram, at Fat Kid Certified SE. On Twitter, at They Call Me Burn. Uh, Craig is not on any of those cool websites. And I got Craig. Facebook and I got Snapchat. Snapcat. That's about it. So, until our next episode of the Fantasy Football Preview and the next Mount Rushmore, this has been Fat Kid Certified Sports Entertainment. Let's go eat. I'm hungry.